researcher at CEI. I first started here in 2013. Um, I have a master's in natural resources from the University of Illinois. And I also work on the Uzuma Sound Ecosystem Research Project with Brennan and the rest of these young scientists. Um, and I'm using that research as a part of a PhD thesis that I'm working on through the University of Glasgow in Scotland. Good morning, my name is Samantha Russell. I'm a research technician with CEI and a bad team exit. Um, I have the pleasure of working with the bad team this semester and being their research advisor. And I'm really excited to introduce them to you today. My name is Carver Ahmed. I'm Will Lyle. I'm Aiden Hoffman. I'm Chavante Devoto. I'm Isabel Olsen. I'm Peter Keane. I'm Will Stone. And our research studied the use of multi-directional cameras as tools to quantify biodiversity around fish aggregation devices, also known as FADs or FADs, in the Exuma Sound. We are also a part of the Exuma Sound Ecosystem Research Project, and we have been trying to see, like the FAD project team mentioned, we are trying to understand the biodiversity in the Exuma Sound. Our project focuses on using FADs as a scientific platform to get a better understanding of what species are out there and how they're utilizing FADs, as well as a possibility of making FADs a conservation tool. 50% of the world's tuna is caught using FADs, but most people don't even know what a FAD is. As I mentioned, FAD is an acronym that stands for Fish Aggregation Device. And these can range in composition from small natural objects, such as sticks and logs that flow out of rivers, to large man-made buoy systems that uh, fishermen use during their outings. Uh, FADs qualify as anything that uh, collect fish, or attract fish in groups, and they have been used throughout history for hundreds of years as effective fishing tools to make catches more successful. Just to show some different types of fads, as you can see, the green buoy here represents the type of fad that a local fisherman would use that would be anchored in a shallow, more reef surrounding area. The red buoy is a different kind of fad. It is a free floating buoy with a GPS transmitter on top that commercial tuna fisheries commonly use in the open ocean. The pink buoys represent the type of fad that we use in our research. It is an anchored subsurface fad that is deployed and set up in such a way as to not allow fishermen to utilize them. It is anchored at about 2,000 feet with the buoys sitting at about 30 feet below the surface. And with this, we can use it specifically for just research and further our information on how they can be put to use as conservation tools. Unfortunately, uh, there are a couple of problems that come with FADs. One being that they are a little regulated. FADs are found worldwide throughout many oceans. Anybody can deploy them anytime, anywhere. Also, they can be made out of almost anything. Um, in this diagram, the, this fad is made of plastic bottles uh, and a fishing net. And this is, this is un, unsustainable. Um, another problem is bycatch. Bycatch is when commercial fishermen pull in unwanted and untargeted species like this whale shark. Uh, fishermen use methods such as netting around fads um, to catch fish. Uh, the untargeted species in this scenario is the whale shark. It's then discarded back into the ocean, dead or alive. And the targeted species are the smaller fish located above the whale shark, and they're then killed and sold. Uh, this is a problem because it negatively impact, impacts the food chain as well as it decreases the population of fish. Well, the main, re uh, the main focus of our research focused on, um, we focused on the de uh, video surveillance of the fads themselves, a unique opportunity we had in our research was access to this piece of equipment here called the Simrad EK80. The Simrad is a depth sonar that is towed behind our boat and we calibrate it to be parallel to the surface of the water as it is being towed on our surveys. Uh, the, survey, uh, the SIMRAD releases an interchangeable frequency between 39 and 75 kilohertz, which is sent down into the water and then is ricocheted off any biomass that is in the water up to 250 meters in depth. In depth. The information is then relayed onto a monitor that is kept on the boat. And here we can see a real-time showing of this cone-shaped graph, and this would be an example of what biomass would be shown by the sonar at a current moment. 
and the dots and the color of the dots represent the depth of the actual biomass and the size and the exact location of them as the survey progresses. And then the red border along the bottom of the graph shows the ocean floor as time progresses as the sonar passes over the ocean. We can see the exact depth in real time. So just to recap on our objectives, we are trying to use, we are trying to, we are using multi-directional camera rigs to see what species, if we can increase the amount of species we see around our fab. We are also trying to gain knowledge on what pelagic species aggregate or associate near our fads. As you can see here, this is, come on. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. So these are certain things you can see during our, during our video analysis. As you can see, here's a barracuda, probably looking for juvenile jacks to feed on. And you can see on our upstream, there are juvenile jacks probably swimming around, associating an fad. And you see in the up where there's snorkelers, fish, the sun, and then just a nice view. Um, in our down angle, you can see that there's fish right here, juvenile jacks, pecking at the rope, which probably has built up algae on it, which they can feed on. Okay, so this right here is a picture of our multi-directional camera rig. As you can see, the three GoPros up here, this one's facing up, upstream, and downstream. As you can see right here, it's the same thing, but this right here, this blue thing, helps it from, stop, from stopping it from the current pushing it away. So when we get to the fad, we free dive 30 feet down to attach, to, oh, to attach this to the top of our fad. And once we do that, we conduct a, a snorkel survey. A snorkel survey is when we snorkel over the buoy, and then, uh, then we look at the fish, and we try to identify which fish and the amount of fish that's there. The camera usually courts for an hour, hour and a half, and then we head back to the boat. Once we head back to the boat, we conduct a transit survey. A transit survey is when we're on the boat, and we're all positioned in different places. I, when, we're when we're positioned in different places, we look out on the boat and we look for anything that's living, such as sargassum, flying fish, other marine animals or fins, and flying fish. So most of the time when we conduct our traffic service, we see flying fish. One cool experience we got to see was dolphins. Dolphins, it was a really cool experience. So most of the time when we're doing our video analysis, we look for these four things. What type of species it is, the amount of species there are, and the time it was first sighted and the time it was last sighted. Using the data that Trey mentioned before, we, able, we were able to analyze the videos and determine the total biodiversity that surrounded our fab. To do so, we use a method called the Shannon Diversity Index. In essence, the Shannon Diversity Index is a natural logarithmic formula that uses species diversity and relative abundance to calculate the total biodiversity. Species diversity is the amount of species and relative abundance is the amount of individuals of each species. As the Shannon Diversity Index increases, so does the biodiversity. This graph has separated the biodiversity into categories of camera angle. The x-axis represents the date, with each bar being representative of a different camera angle, and the y-axis representing the Shannon Diversity Index. As you can see, the gray bar is representative of the upstream camera angle, and the yellow bar is representative of the downstream camera angle. These two camera angles were most effective in displaying high levels of biodiversity whereas our up and down camera angles were not nearly as effective. This graph differs from the first in that it displays biodiversity as a whole. Each, each bar represents all four camera angles and all recorded species. The x-axis is representative of the date and the y-axis is representative of the Shannon Diversity Index. This is helpful because we can understand the total biodiversity that surrounded our fat on that day. We found that it is really important to compare both graphs so that we don't miss important information. As you can see, on September 17th, there was a large discrepancy. According to the first graph, September 17th displayed no biodiversity. Our second graph, however, states that it had the highest level of biodiversity during our study. This is because each camera recorded only one species, which registers a zero on the Shannon Diversity Index. Our second graph was able to take all recorded species into account and therefore allow it to score on the Shannon Diversity Index. Clearly, it is really important that we compare both graphs when analyzing our data. 
During our video analysis, we primarily see small juvenile jacks, but we have additionally seen a couple um, larger pelagic species, as you can see in this video clip, which is taken from the downstream camera. You can see how the small juvenile jacks are starting to swarm towards the hammerhead shark in the top left corner and starting to school behind it. They do this to find protection and stay in a spot that isn't easy for the shark to turn around and eat them. Also, if the shark were to feed on anything, any scraps left in the water is then easy for the jacks to feed on as well. You can also see the schooling. You can also see the schooling in this video of a barracuda. Oh, okay, but so there's a video of a barracuda and it swims by and then there's a ton of jacks that swarm behind it. Um, we also saw how um, the predator-prey cycle is very relevant. We saw how when there's an abundance of jacks, it brings in and attracts the larger pelagic species to feed on them. And then once they're done feeding and wiped out most of the population, um, they leave until the population recovers. Uh, so, after looking at these graphs, you can clearly see that the two camera angles of the highest biodiversity are downstream followed by upstream. There are several factors as to why this is, one of which is the depth of the fad. So, our fads are about 30 feet deep, and the, uh, the jacks are staying level on a level plane at that depth. So, there are several reasons why this is, one of which is the fact that there's structure there. Uh, in the pelagic zone, it's mostly all water, so there's, not, there's pretty much nothing, so the fact that there's structure there is shocking to these jacks. Um, the fad also offers food and protection as well. Um, also has to do with the current. So our upstream and downstream camera angles look directly up and down the current. So, uh, so, the, so we can so the current is used as a sort of road for a pelagic species, and we see and these fish are passing by our fad and we're catching them on our cameras. Last factor is migration patterns. So as the waters up north are getting colder, migratory fish are coming down south in search of warmer waters. Some of these fish are passing through the Exuma Sound and they're stopping at our fads. Uh, so in the future, we would like to add a fifth camera angle to our fad, so we would like that to look directly at the fad. Uh, when we do our snor snorkel surveys, we see these jacks rubbing themselves against the side of the fad buoys. Uh, we believe this is because they have parasites that they're trying to uh, rub off or remove. Um, so the data from the Biodiversity Index has given us great insight into how pelagic species interact with structure in the exhibit sound. Uh, this data is also very helpful for other researchers studying how fish interact with open water structures. Uh, this, is a, this has given us great data into understanding the pelagic zone in the exhibit sound, and we have started down the path of using FAS as conservation tools. We would like to thank our research advisors, Eric Schneider and Sam Russell, for directing us through this FAS research project. Thank you, Juliet, Jess, and Emily for coming out on the field days and helping out. Thank you, Brendan and Candace from the Pelagics team. Uh, we'd we'll like to thank Kids Chef for providing us with field lunches. Thank you to the communications team for joining us on our field days and recording our experience. A huge thank you goes to Matt Witt, who taught us how to use the sonar and then basically let us keep it for the remainder of the semester. <laughs> thank you to the Bono staff for providing us with books and allowing us to conduct the research. throughout the whole study, but we compared some of our data to another fad that we didn't really discuss, but we have a south fad as well with just one camera rig, and so we made some comparisons, but they're made out of the same material. So the question was, how do we keep the fads secret from fishermen, right? Yeah, like a local fisherman, I mean, you got a spot out there, why so wouldn't they go fish out there? Oh, okay, so basically our fads are like past the drop-off, which where it goes from about 200 meters to 1,000 meters, 
and that's going to waste a lot of gas for fishermen. So it's not really an uh, ideal place to go for, for fishermen to go. And it's really hard to see from the eye when you're just looking down because if you get a top angle of it, it, it's just this bright blue thing. But if you're just zooming past, you're not, it's not that easy to notice. Yeah, fat, so our fads are 30 feet down, so a boat driving over it will not see it unless they're looking closely down the bottom. Uh, GPS. <laughs> Any more questions? Yep. How much did the sea state affect the uh, studies in terms of the wave height? Excuse me, say that again? How much of the sea state is the wave height and the condition of the surface affect the studies? Uh, so most days we went out, it was relatively calm, so we don't really have the data for that, but I would assume it's pretty much the same.